This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. Here are some things we noticed in the news this week. We've heard a lot about fact-checking the major party presidential candidates, particularly when it comes to the claims they make in debates. That's all well and good, but what about fact-checking the debate moderators? Here's ABC's Martha Raddatz during the vice presidential debate. Let's talk about Medicare and entitlements. Both Medicare and Social Security are going broke and taking a larger share of the budget in the process. Will benefits for Americans under these programs have to change for the programs to survive? Reporters have been saying this for a long time. Social Security is going broke. A few months ago, ABC News said the program would run out of money in 20 years. But it isn't true. Social Security has built up a multi-trillion dollar surplus to deal with the surge of retirees in coming years. And as some economists have pointed out for years, it could be put on a more secure long-term footing with just a few minor changes. Of course, this matters because journalists should know these things. But it matters especially during a debate, because how can you respond? Clearly, the right answer to this falsely premised question is, yes, we must cut people's benefits in order to deal with this urgent problem. A candidate who has to begin their response by pointing out that the question has a false premise is at a distinct disadvantage, even if they're right. We'll forget about fact-checking for a minute. Some journalists are upset about how the candidates behaved during the debates. Now, we know that MSNBC has carved out a niche as a Democratic-leaning channel. But host Chris Matthews took that to a curious level. I don't think anyone really believes that you're a person who's going to be pushing for oil and gas and coal. You'll get your chance in a moment. I'm still speaking. Well, My, and the answer is, I don't believe people think that's the case because I'm, I'm, that wasn't a question. Okay. That was what? a statement. You know, a couple of points. I don't think he understands the Constitution of the United States. He's the president of the United States. You don't say, you'll get your chance. Respect for anyone is a good idea, but we don't think there's anything about that in the Constitution. There are places in the world where it's dangerous or even illegal to disparage the people in charge, but we don't really think it's a policy to emulate. And speaking of bad things, we know that media is supported by advertising. What advertisers want is an important factor in what content you get to see. But there's supposed to be a wall between the part of the outlet that sells ads and the part that produces journalism. Well, Forbes magazine says to heck with that. Why not let advertisers write their own stories? The New York Post, of all places, took note of this, explaining that Forbes' scheme, it's called Brand Voices, is to run things that look like news articles from writers who work directly for advertisers instead of the magazine. The advertiser-sponsored copy is in the same style and format as the other articles, with some subtle signs to alert the reader that it's not pure editorial. A Forbes rep reportedly told an audience at an industry conference that editors need to give up the idea that they're the only ones smart enough to write articles. And he had another defense. Many of these posts are written by laid-off journalists who've had to take jobs in corporate media relations departments. So this anti-journalistic endeavor is really in support of journalists. Forbes is going to need to work harder on selling that line. This is Fair TV. I'm Janine Jackson.